People often comment on the look of someone's neck and collarbone area. This is an attractive feature in both women and men. But the question is, how do you actually make your neck and collarbone area look better? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you. When I was in high school, I remember I used to work out with two of my friends in my buddy's basement. And there was one of my friends in particular that I was kind of jealous of because he just had that muscular, relaxed neck and trap look that everybody kind of wants. And I just couldn't figure out why as much as I worked out, I could never seem to achieve that same look. I didn't know this at the time, but what I was really looking at in my buddy was good, proper neck posture. Mike Mew often says a healthy face is an attractive face. Well, it's the same thing with your neck. A healthy neck posture is an attractive neck. A good way to look at perfect posture is by actually looking at like ancient Roman statues or for example, comic books or superheroes in movies. Now, the reason that these people look so good is not only because they're really muscular, but because they have perfect posture. So you'll often see a few key distinct features in people that have this posture. One, the angle of their shoulders is pretty much flat. If anything, it looks like their traps slope downwards rather than upwards. Two, their shoulders are rotated outwards. This causes their upper chest and their collarbone to almost look like it's being pushed forwards. This naturally kind of makes it look like they're sticking their chest out, but really they just have good posture. They're just relaxed. Three, their trap muscles appear to be long and relaxed. This is another distinctive feature you'll see in people with good neck posture. Their traps look relaxed, they look bigger, and they just look good. Number four, their head will be generally directly above their shoulders from the side and their ears will not be slanted. They won't have any forward head posture. Now, the first thing to realize is that unless you have a perfectly forward developed jaw, and perfect tongue posture, you probably have some degree of muscle imbalance. It is so rare in today's society for someone to have perfect posture just because we spend so much time slouched over on couches, on devices, sitting, you got the point. If you want to improve the look of your neck and your posture, the first step is to recognize your muscle imbalances. There are generally two main imbalances that most people have to some degree or the other. The first is forward head posture. You can detect forward head posture simply by taking a photo of yourself from the side and assessing how far forward your head is in front of the midline of your body. The second imbalance is rounded shoulders and kyphosis or rounding of the upper back. You can determine if you have this by doing something called the thumb test. This is very simple. It just involves relaxing your shoulders in a mirror or taking a photo and seeing the degree to which your thumbs point inwards indicating rounded shoulders. These muscle balances almost always come together. If your head is forward, your shoulders will round forward and vice versa. So if you have one, chances are you have both. Now look, before I go on, I have good news and bad news. I'll start with the good news. The good news is you can improve this right now. You can improve this today and I'm gonna tell you how. Since you have muscle imbalances, the way to correct them is to stretch the tight muscles and strengthen the weak ones. The most important muscles for you to stretch, if you're like most people, are your upper traps, levator scapula, SEM muscles, scalenes, and the muscles on the back of your neck. For your upper body, you'll want to stretch your chest, the front of your shoulders, your biceps, forearms, and your lats. Now, what about the weak muscles? If you were to Google forward head posture, what you'd see is that the muscles that are weak are on the front of your neck, your deep cervical flexors that cause your chin to flex inwards towards your neck. Now, these muscles seem to be on your neck, but really the muscle that's weak is your tongue. As Dr. Shiab Faragella said when I spoke to him and on this video, when you practice tongue elevation and mewing or using myospots or anything like that, you're stabilizing the muscles in the front of your neck. In other words, just by mewing and having proper tongue posture, you're actually strengthening these neck muscles that connect to your tongue. Your tongue bridges the gap between your entire skeletal structure and your lower jaw. So if you want to improve your posture and your neck posture, you're gonna want to improve your tongue, strengthening it, improving your resting tongue posture, 
will help with the imbalance. If you don't do this, if you just work on improving and stretching your neck, then what will happen is it will relapse because you're not addressing the other side, which is the weak muscles. What I recommend you do is start by stretching your neck muscles. I'll link to some videos on our channel that show these stretches. Also, Dr. Estrabilo and I created a program, a 12-week tongue posture improvement program that has these stretches in it as well, and I'll link so you can sign up to be registered for that. As you do these stretches, what you're going to notice is your, your neck and your collarbone area is going to start to look better. This is because your shoulders will be less shrugged as your traps, levator scapula, and other muscles mentioned begin to relax and lengthen. Your shoulders will be further down and your head will be less far forward. Your shoulders will also be less rotated. All in all, this will make your neck and collarbone look more relaxed in the short term, like as in immediately after you do them. What you'll probably notice is as you stretch those muscles, your tongue will feel different. It will more easily sit on the roof of your mouth, which will make it even easier for you to continue to strengthen those tongue muscles. Now that's the good news, but as I said, I have bad news as well. And the bad news is that if you think that you can just do stretches, some stretches and stuff and have perfect posture, you probably won't be able to. The development of your jaw will limit your ability to have perfect posture. To understand why this is, let's imagine for a second that someone has a crowded upper jaw. They have poor forward growth of their upper and lower jaws and therefore less space for their tongue. Because of this imbalance, it'll make it hard for them to breathe because their tongue will obstruct their airway. If this person were to try to have perfect posture, what would happen is that they would lose space for their tongue. So their head would have to come forward. It would be uncomfortable for them to have perfect posture. What am I trying to say here? Perfect posture is not possible to achieve without having ideal and perfect development of the jaws to have room for your tongue. This means that you can improve in the short term, but you'll only be able to improve to a certain degree. When I first discovered these stretches, I was obsessed. I was in college at the time and just realizing that I could do some stretches and improve the way I look, I was doing them all the time. But what I quickly realized is that I could only get so far. My facial growth and the development of my jaws was preventing me from really having perfect posture, but I didn't know this at the time. Now there is a silver lining in this. There is some good news in this because like I said, right now my posture is the best that it's ever been. So is my jaw and my tongue posture. Your jaw can improve over time. The development of your jaw can improve over time. So if you continue to improve your posture and you continue to practice mewing and tongue elevation, what you'll find is that over time your jaw will improve. So while you can only improve to a certain degree in the short term, in the long term, you can continue to expand that boundary and make more and more changes. This is what I recommend you do. Do these stretches basically every day or every week at least. Continue to improve your posture and then continue to do some form of tongue elevation, whether it's exercises, mewing, myo spots, it doesn't matter. You just wanna be strengthening your tongue, having good tongue posture, and improving your body posture. And over time, you will see more and more results in the long term. Thank you for watching this video. All the links will be in the description for Dr. Estrabilo and my program that's coming out soon, as well as the links to the videos where you can find the posture exercises. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best. Thank you.